All right, well, there is another platform out there which many people love, including our director and producer, by the way. It's called the Macintosh. And Apple has recently released the latest version of its new operating system for the Mac, OS 10.1. Here to show us its new features is Ken Bereskin of Apple. How are you doing, Ken? Doing great, sir. And uh, there is some lovely stuff inside uh, OS 10 here. So let's start out basically with the user interface, which I guess you guys call Aqua, right? Um, absolutely. You know, after a, a very simple 15 or 20 minute upgrade, you can transform your Mac, and the first thing you see is the Aqua UI. Okay. Um, let's take a look at a, a couple simple things. I'll just open up an image. And one of the goals with Aqua is to just be as clean and as simple as possible. So yeah. here I have a window. You notice we're not using a lot of pixels to separate the window. Mm -hmm. um, we're really in crisp. instead yeah. using a, a beautifully uh, cast drop shadow mm -hmm. that gives it depth and dimension. Got it. Uh, if you resize the image, then the scroll bars appear so that you can yep. manipulate the yep. image. But if it you don't need it, Got they it. all disappear. Okay. Now, I Aqua. Go ahead. Yeah, Aqua also uses uh, transparency a lot. Um, for example, if I pull down a menu, I can see through it. you can actually see the contents That's of your great. document coming through. All the text is really finely anti-aliased to give you a very yeah. sharp, very readable UI as well. Nice. All right, so let's talk about the dock at the bottom and what you're doing there. Sure. So the dock is an important fixture of the Aqua user interface. It's the place that people go to access their most frequently used applications mm -hmm. and documents and folders. Um, so it's just one click to open up any of these applications. But it also has another great feature. If I click on our little minimize control right. featured in any window, um, it will ah, minimize directly well, down onto the dock, the a time. beautiful little animation that we call the genie effect. And right. of course, all you need to do is um, click, and it zooms back up. We have yeah. a, a slow-mo, so we can show you, you really into this stuff. exactly how the algorithm works. It right, really right. gives a great association. Right. Now, obviously, one of the cool things about the Mac and about OS X is its ability to handle digital applications. So let's take a look at some of those. iTunes is a hot one, obviously. And just show us a little bit how you do that in OS X. Oh, absolutely. People have you know, a huge music collection and digital camcorders and digital cameras. And the Mac really right. is the, the center of that digital hub. Um, an application like iTunes is really simple for managing and organizing your entire MP3 collection. Mm -hmm. So here's you know, all my CDs that I've ripped into the MP3 format. You can scan through artists, yeah, different albums, uh, and you can play it Got obviously it. directly on, so your, sure. on your Mac. Now you have your iPod here, so let's show everybody the iPod. I do. Um, Turn it on, hold up so we can all see it. And just using the, the FireWire connection that's built right in, you can uh -huh. connect it up to your Mac. In and, and out of your Mac in less than 10 iPod. minutes, a thousand songs from your Wow. Music collection downloaded automatically onto yeah, your iMac, yeah. so you have a thousand songs in your pocket. All right, show us real briefly iMovie, because obviously another really cool thing you can do in OS X. Uh, of course, if you've got a digital camcorder, uh, iMovie makes it really simple to grab the images, download them into the computer, break them into clips, organize them into um, you know different segments, mm -hmm. and we'll just play um, um, a resulting output. So here's a very simple kids shot yeah. with simple transitions and this is perfect DV quality. You're not losing yes. any resolution. Yeah, so dump your DV camcorder into the into right. and go. So when you're finished, you can just gotcha. output it back to the DV camera or VHS yeah. or if you have a Mac with a super drive, you can actually write that out to a DVD right, right. and make it work on right. any consumer DVD player. Let's talk about digital photography. You got your digital camera. I think you have a Kodak yep. or something over We've here. Got a a mid-range Kodak consumer digital okay. camera. And all I need to do is turn this on. And Mac OS X is going to detect it automatically. We have drivers for all the popular USB mm -hmm. cameras. The yeah, image capture bounce, application camera. starts up. There's a number of options, but most people just choose to download the images uh -huh. automatically. And we're now transferring over fast USB from the camera into my Mac. Mm -hmm. And it's building rich preview icons so that you can actually see your images yeah, uh, before nice. you open them. And it will open up the folder in the Finder show you all those images automatically. And we've built in some great things as well. So you can like wallpaper these things or you whatever. You can make it your desktop. And mm -hmm. I, we also have a really great screen saver that's going to take all of these images out of your pictures folder huh. and build this really beautiful nice, presentation nice, that's nice, using nice. Hollywood effects. Yeah. All right, only a little bit of time left. And I know there's so much to cover. First of all, uh, the digital stuff is cool. A lot of people just want to work. Right. And there is Office for the Mac. And just show us briefly what that looks like. Sure. Microsoft recently introduced Office version 10. Um, they've really taken full maximum power of Mac OS X. Let me just open up a spreadsheet using Excel here. And you'll notice that the same graphic hues and tunes mm -hmm. from um, the Aqua user interface are there. But it's been tweaked for, for the Mac OS? It certainly has. Um, for example, if I edit a cell, you notice how the, the cell literally pops out of the screen. If I take a look at um, pie charts, yeah. um, beautiful use of graphics so that it's very finely anti-aliased, great quality. Mm -hmm. And if I go into a 3D chart, um, one of the challenges with 3D series charts is that 
one series can block the other. So let's just uh, bring up our fill effects here. Use that transparency feature. And we're going to take before. advantage of the exact same transparency. We'll just set it to about 25 or 30 percent. Press OK, and now nice, you can nice, see the nice, entire nice. chart. All right, real quick, we're almost out of time. Show me the iBook and one cool thing you can do on the iBook. With Absolutely. OSD. We, we take a lot of pride in the fact that we've designed the entire thing for consumers, from the hardware to the operating system, then with the key applications. Yeah. And you can really see that on something like an iBook. So or open a it up and, and notice that I open it up and within go to a work. second, <laughs> it's instant on. That's great. The user interface is there. You're uh, wireless networking is all configured, and you're ready to go. Ken, thanks so much. It's my pleasure, Steve. All right, that's our look at the new generation of operating system software, but don't go away. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week, Microsoft's new hardware product, the Xbox.